It's a very happy week for me, friends, because not only is it October, the best month of the year, but I just got my COVID-19 booster shot, which means, you know, along with my fresh new flu shot, uh, it means that I can move into spoopy season uh, much less worried about getting sick or even worse, getting vulnerable people around me sick. I do know that vaccines are the last layer of protection. I'm still going to mask. I'm still going to stick to well-ventilated spaces. But with this final layer of protection, I'm going to be much less anxious and therefore much less annoying to the people around me. So really, everybody benefits in a variety of ways. To make things even better, I happen to get my booster shot on the very same day that that booster shot won the Nobel Prize in medicine. Okay, well, you know, the the booster shot didn't win, but two of the researchers who were integral to its creation did win, Catelyn Carrico and Drew Wiseman. Now I know what you're all thinking, hold on, Rebecca, I am very well educated in this subject, I watch every episode of Joe Rogan, and thus I know that the man who should have won the Nobel Prize for creating mRNA vaccines is one Dr. Robert Malone, who not only almost single-handedly invented mRNA therapies, but who has also been a brave voice arguing that they are actually secretly very dangerous, despite the fact that they've obviously saved millions of lives just in the past three years alone. Okay, if you missed my original video on Robert Malone back in January of 2022, I highly recommend you pause this one and go watch that one because it'll make this one just that much more satisfying. But just in case you are tight on time, I'll sum it up for you. Uh, Robert Malone was an mRNA researcher who back in the 1980s did make an important discovery. He figured out how to use fat to expose mRNA to cells and tell them to start producing proteins. This was an important step, but Malone was only one of hundreds of people who contributed to that scientific progress. When COVID-19 appeared, he became furious that some researchers got the spotlight while he was ignored. One of the researchers he complained about, which I mentioned in that previous video, was Catelyn Carrico, who revealed to a journalist at the time that Malone had emailed her claiming to be her mentor and kind of like vaguely threatening her, this is not going to end well. In fact, you know, it turns out they had only met one time when Malone invited Carrico to give a talk. So I guess what I'm saying is that I hope that the Nobel Assembly is throwing in a bonus security detail for Carrico because... Malone sounds completely unhinged, and I would hate for her to have to spend some of her prize money protecting herself from that weirdo. All that said, I do think that the Nobel Prize can be a little bit problematic in that so many of our most important scientific advances are due to the collaborative effort of many, many people, as Carrico herself has pointed out. The world somewhat pays attention to who wins the Nobel Prize, and so the committees really have to carefully consider who they're going to put in the spotlight and who will inevitably be left waiting in the wings. In the past, this was a much easier decision because there really were these very clear and obvious discoveries made by independent scientists who were worthy of recognition. By which I mean, you could just go with the most prominent old white guy whose name is on the door to the laboratory and call it a day. If the aggrieved, humorless, and historically ignorant old white men could please just choose one thread in which to leave their angry and pedantic comments below, um, we would all really appreciate that. Thank you. Anyway, uh, out of hundreds of people who made important discoveries on the way to my booster shot, why did the Nobel Committee pick Carrico and Wiseman? Well, it seems to me like a pretty good choice, actually, because yes, people like Malone made important advances on mRNA in the 1980s. But by the 1990s, the entire field hit a pretty big roadblock. It turns out that the human immune system is just too good at what it does. There was something about the synthetic RNA that made it stick out as an obvious foreign invader, meaning that cells attacked and killed it before it made it to its destination. So not only 
only was it not therapeutic, but the resulting immune response could be downright dangerous for some patients. This problem was so massive that pretty much everyone gave it up as not worth pursuing. You know, a lot of the researchers who were studying it, along with the universities and governments and private industry that were funding this research, they all thought it, it was insurmountable, just not worth pursuing. But Catlin Carrico didn't think so, even after years of grant rejections and being demoted in 1995 by her employer, University of Pennsylvania, after six years of work, all because she just couldn't convince anyone that she could find the answer. She considered giving up and just finding something else to do with her time, but thankfully, in 1997, she met Drew Wiseman, who was an immunologist at UPenn working on RNA therapies for brain problems. They met at a photocopier where they started sharing gripes about how hard it was to get funding to study RNA. They teamed up, and in 2005, they published their groundbreaking fix for the problem. By altering one piece of the synthetic RNA, they allowed it to sneak past the immune system and deliver its message to the cells. Now, they knew that this was a life-changing innovation, so in 2006, they formed their own biotech company where they continued their mRNA work. Progress was slow, but in 2013, Carrico realized UPenn was just never going to allow her to actually find applications for her research. So she took a job at the German startup BioNTech. In 2019, she became their senior vice president, and in 2020... Well, we all know what happened in 2020. mRNA vaccines were able to be developed much more quickly than traditional vaccines, meaning that it's safe to say that without Carico's insight and her persistence, the COVID-19 vaccines may not have been ready in time to save millions of lives during this pandemic. While it's a shame that there will be many people forgotten in this story, I'm glad that she and Weissman are getting their time in the spotlight. However, there is one other thing I want to mention because it's just as important as remembering that there are other people who will be left out of this narrative. There are also other technologies that are being overshadowed. Novavax is a more traditional type of vaccine. While mRNA vaccines teach your cells how to make the necessary proteins, Novavax dumps those spike proteins right into your body via nanoparticles, along with an adjuvant that boosts the effect. The mRNA vaccines had the benefit of the United States' largest pharmaceutical companies pushing them through clinical trials as quickly as possible, leaving Novavax kind of limping behind as case rates started dropping. While the mRNA vaccines are easier slash faster to produce, Novavax is cheaper, easier to store, you can just refrigerate it, and it looks like it's either nearly effective or possibly equally effective or possibly more effective if you mix and match as mRNA vaccines alone at protecting against Omicron. Plus, as a little bonus, it appears that people have been reporting way fewer side effects. This study is in preprint, but it does suggest less fatigue, sleepiness, you know, joint pain, fever, headache, way less injection site and muscle pain, which is my only side effect when I get boosted. And great news, just this week, the FDA has finally approved Novavax for distribution, so you should be seeing it in your local pharmacy soon. Now, to be clear, I'm not suggesting that you delay getting your booster if your doctor or local pharmacy only has Pfizer or Moderna mRNA vaccines. Current data suggests they're probably pretty much all the same. And, you know, anecdotally, at every point in this pandemic, I have chosen to get whatever is available first. Oftentimes, it ends up being the less effective vaccine, and I still haven't gotten COVID yet. I mean, I'm still masking, distancing, whatever. Just food for thought. Uh, but it's critical for the world to have access to multiple kinds of vaccines, especially when it comes to poorer countries that have greater difficulty coming up with the production, the storage, and the distribution facilities that are required for mRNA vaccines. Plus, Novavax's successful use of an adjuvant to boost their effects uh, might translate over to mRNA. They might be able to start using that technology to even improve those vaccines. So, everybody wins. The takeaway here is that mRNA vaccines are incredible technology that not only saved millions of lives, but are going to go on to save millions more, maybe billions more, as that technology is applied to different therapies for different disorders. 
And personally, I do think that the Nobel Prize in this case went to some very deserving scientists. At the same time, we should celebrate the fact that we still have multiple ways to accomplish the goal of vaccinating the world and saving as many lives as possible. And we should remember that we all benefit from allowing scientists to freely explore the many ways that we might solve future problems, even if we can't immediately see the applications that this research might have. And please finally get your booster shot. The current boosters are specifically targeted to Omicron. They work way better than the previous shots for the current uh, virus that is out there. So getting vaccinated in the coming weeks can help make your winter less sniffly. And of course, it can help the immunocompromised people around you make it through the winter alive and well. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.